Chatterbox. Oh, he loves his dad. Tom Parker is planning a star-studded charity concert to raise funding and awareness for brain cancer. He's been living with a stage four brain tumor for five months. It does look a lot more under control, doesn't it? A lot more under control. Tom's most recent MRI scan shows that chemo and radiotherapy has shrunk the tumor. Yeah, but it's still there, isn't it? Yeah, it's still there. But it's not it's growing, but it just doesn't look as prominent, does it? No. I needed this. I don't think you can ever feel like you turn the corner with something so serious. Some people die within four months of getting a, a you know, a diagnosis. And this is why I told you to have this album on there, so you can look back and go, right, OK, that's what it looks like, that's where I'm at. Yeah. With the NHS, you get chemotherapy, radiotherapy. Cheers, pal. And that's pretty much it. So we decided that we were going to go and explore the private route. For the last few months, private treatment has enabled Tom to access experimental new drugs at University College Hospital in London. So I ended up getting speaking to a woman down here called Laurie. Turns out that she's got glioblastoma as well. She's going to be there today. She has the treatment the same day as me. Cheers, Tom. I've been feeling fine this week. It's been good. You? Uh, yeah, the legs. It's been a bit pingy still. But anyway, we're doing all right. <laughs> Treatment buddies. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you known each other? It's about eight weeks. Yeah. Yeah, just since the start of our treatment together. Oh. He's very supportive, and his treatment's slightly ahead of mine, so I can ask him for some advice. <laughs> it's nice having a treatment buddy. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing really well. Today. We're ready to rock and roll. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> the private treatments Tom and Laurie are receiving include immunotherapy, which aims to boost their immune systems to fight the cancer. Superstar. Thank you. Thanking you. Immunotherapy is still in clinical trials for brain tumours, so it isn't available on the NHS, where chemo and radiotherapy are offered as standard. It's important to try new drugs because standard of care in the UK has not changed for glioblastoma in the last 20 years. I'm very lucky to be fortunate enough to be in a position where I can afford private health care. A lot of people don't get the opportunity. Glioblastoma is a disease that doesn't ever really go away. It's just trying to not let it get too crazy. When we first got diagnosed, the oncologist was like, do you want to know the prognosis? How long have I got to live? I mean, I would have found out, but Kelsey and my brother were like, no, we don't want to know. So I don't really know what we're working towards, really, but I do really. Obviously, I've gone out of my way to find out what the prognosis is of glioblastoma and, well, let's just put it this way, it ain't amazing. But I don't feel like you really know how you feel about death until you're faced with it. It's a weird one. Because if you know you've got 18 months to live, at least then you can to get your affairs in order, you know, especially for her and the kids. If I'm going to die is the most important question, if. Baroness Jowell. Yeah. On the 24th of May last year, I got into a taxi, but I couldn't speak. Two days later, I was told that I had a brain tumour. Baroness Tessa Jowell was diagnosed with a glioblastoma, the same tumour as Tom, in 2017. GMB generally has a very poor prognosis and no new vital drugs have been developed in years. Usually, drug, d uh, d drug t d t trials test tested only one uh, drug at a time. They take years and cost a fortune to deliver. For what would every cancer patient want? 
to know that the latest science was available for them so that we can live well together with cancer, not just dying of it, all of us for longer. Thank you. Less than four months after giving her final speech in the House of Lords, Tessa Joel died at home. It had been a year since her diagnosis. That was four years ago that Tessa did that speech in Parliament and everyone clapped and stood up and it was a moving moment, but guess what? Four years later, nothing's really changed. <laughs>